Welcome to a lesson on changing a differential equation and a system of differential equations to a first order system. Before we can talk about how to handle systems, let us note that in some sense, we need to only consider first order systems. Let us take an nth order differential equation as defined below. If we define new variables, u1, u2, all the way through un, and write the system u1 prime equals u2, u2 prime equals u3, all the way down to u sub n minus one prime equals u sub n, and then finally u sub n prime equals big F of u sub n, u sub n minus one, all the way down to u2, u1, and x. We can solve the system for u1, u2, all the way through un. Once we have solved for u1, we can discard u2 through un and let y equal u1. This y solves the original differential equation. To better understand this, Let's take a look at example 3.1.4 on the next slide. We are given x triple prime equals two x double prime plus eight x prime plus x plus t. We want to change this differential equation to a system that is a first order system. Notice how the highest derivative is x triple prime. This indicates when assigning new variables, we will stop at x double prime. To begin, we let u1 equal x, u2 equal x prime, and u3 equal x double prime. Again, we stop here because we have u3 equals x double prime, which is one order less than the highest derivative in the differential equation. And now we write a first order system. Notice if u1 equals x and u2 equals x prime, we begin with u1 prime equals u2, and if u2 equals x prime and u3 equals x double prime, we also have u2 prime equals u3. And now moving to the differential equation, x triple prime is equal to u3 prime, which is equal to two x double prime, which is two times u3, plus eight x prime, which is plus eight u2, plus x is plus u1, and then we have plus t. Notice now we do have a first order system. A similar process can be followed for a system of higher order differential equations. For example, a system of k differential equations in k unknowns all of order n can be transformed into a first order system of n times k equations and n times k unknowns. And now let's consider the next example. Let's consider the system of differential equations from the carts in our previous lesson, where the system was m1 times x1 double prime equals k times the difference of x2 and x1 and m2 times x2 double prime equals negative k times the difference of x2 and x1. Starting with the first equation, we will let u1 equal x1 and u2 equals x1 prime. We stop here because looking at the first equation, notice the highest derivative of x1 is x1 double prime. Moving to the second equation, we let u3 equal x2 and u4 equals x2 prime. And now we write the second order system as a first order system. To begin, if u1 equals x1, and u2 equals x1 prime, we have u1 prime equals u2. And then moving to the differential equation, m1 times x1 double prime is equal to m1 times u2 prime, which is equal to k times the difference of x2 and x1 is a difference of u3 and u1. And I'm moving to the second equation. If u3 equals x2 and u4 equals x2 prime, we have u3 prime equals u4. And then for the equation, m2 times x2 double prime is equal to m2 times u4 prime, which is equal to negative k times the difference of u3 and u1. Notice now we do have a first order system. The idea works in reverse as well. Consider the system x prime equals two y minus x and y prime equals x, where the independent variable is t. We wish to solve for the initial conditions, x of zero equals one, and y of zero equals zero. If we differentiate both sides of the second equation, y prime equals x, notice we get the equation y double prime equals x prime. We know x prime from the first equation is equal to two y minus x, and we also know from the second equation, x equals y prime. So starting with y double prime equals x prime, we can substitute two y minus x for x prime, and then we can substitute y prime for x, which gives us y double prime, equals two y minus y prime. We know how to solve this type of differential equation. If we set the right side equal to zero, 
we have the differential equation y double prime plus y prime minus two y equals zero, which we can solve using a characteristic equation. Notice the corresponding characteristic equation below in blue is r squared plus r minus two equals zero, where the roots are r equals negative two or r equals one. Because we have two distinct real roots, we know the general solution is in the form of y equals c1 e to the negative two t plus c2 e to the t. And now that we have y, we can determine x because x is equal to y prime. This indicates that x is equal to negative two c1 e to the negative two t plus c2 e to the t. So now we know y is equal to c1 e to the negative two t plus c2 e to the t, and we know x is equal to negative two c1 e to the negative two t plus c2 e to the t. From here, we need to determine c1 and c2 using the initial conditions. Let's do this on the next slide. So starting with x of zero equals one, we substitute zero for t in the equation for x and set the function value equal to one. This gives us negative two c1 e to the zero plus c2 e to the zero equals one. Simplifying, we have the equation negative two c1 plus c2 equals one. Using the second initial condition, y of zero equals zero, using the equation for y, we substitute zero for t and set the function value equal to zero. This gives us c1 e to the zero plus c2 e to the zero equals zero. Simplifying, we have c1 plus c2 equals zero. And now we solve the system to determine c1 and c2. Let's multiply the second equation by two, which I've done below. And now if we add the two equations together, notice the c1 terms simplify out and we're left with three C2 equals one, and therefore C2 equals one third, and since C1 plus C2 equals zero, C1 equals negative one third. And now we have our solution. We have Y equals negative one third, E to the negative two T plus one third E to the T, and X equals two thirds E to the negative two T plus one third T. It is useful to go back and forth between systems and higher order equations for other reasons. For example, software for solving ODEs numerically is generally for first order systems. To use it, we take whatever ODE we want to solve and convert it to a first order system. It is not very hard to adapt computer code for the Euler or Runge-Kutta method for first order equations to handle first order systems. We simply treat the dependent variable not as a number, but as a vector. In many mathematical computer languages, there's almost no distinction in syntax. I hope you found this helpful.